Okay, so I'm just vacuuming down the recovery tank here. Um, all my bits and pieces ready to go. Uh, just to recap, guys, I had a failure of the uh, pressure sensor. Uh, the air conditioning was inoperative on my Prius C, if you recall. Um, and I suspected a leak, but it turned out it wasn't a leak. The pressure sensor had failed high. It was The car seemed to think there was 469 PSI of pressure, so the overpressure cut out, of course, kicked in. So I've got myself an aftermarket sensor. Toyota wanted $469 Canadian. No, sorry, $491 Canadian, uh, plus tax for that. 40 bucks for an aftermarket uh, sensor. Uh, I'm gonna change the uh, the desiccant. Make sure all your uh, your refrigerant oil and your tracer dye is um, um, hybrid compatible, of course. And uh, I've got the refrigerant here. Um, not sure how much I'm going to need between what I recover and what I put back in. We'll see how that goes. So critical to the plot line here, guys, is the is the fact that the block um, where the sensor is actually mounted in this boss here, um, with the high side fitting and the side glass, um, there is no Schrader valve, so you can't simply remove the sensor. You'll blind yourself in the process and uh, you know lose all your refrigerant. Um, so I'll have to recover the refrigerant, affect the repair, uh, change the uh, desiccant bag, pull a vacuum on the system, and install the refrigerant. Right? So too bad Toyota didn't spend another five bucks there. I could have saved all this grief. I got a wee bit ahead of myself here. So I didn't recover that much from the system. And you guys, some of you guys know that I mentioned before there's an oil stain on the condenser here. So I've washed it off because uh, this car is absolutely covered in uh, anti-corrosive uh, spray and I wasn't sure whether it was actually uh, refrigerant oil or anti-corrosive spray that was just kind of blown back and staining the condenser uh, but because I've recovered so little I think there's a distinct possibility that that condenser is maybe leaking so I don't want to get ahead of myself here let me just do a quick leak check here on the system just under 110 pounds in it I've been watching this suspect corner here. I don't see anything. Nothing. And this uh, this better bubble leak uh, detection fluid is a, it's a good product. You know, you get the tiniest of leaks. It, the bubbles cluster and cling together. So it's, it, it's pretty good. So I don't see it in there at the moment. Nor has the uh, leak. Uh, we're heading towards 20 minutes there and we haven't even lost, we've lost nothing. This moment is tight. But if that car there, that SX4 out in the driveway there, has taught me anything, it's that because you have a tight system now, does not mean it's going to be a tight system when it's under thermal load or it's in, uh, right now it's just static, right? But once the system's dynamic operating, you know, the compressor's running, you get vibration, differential pressures and temperatures, uh, it can leak and uh, you know obviously this is a good start but I'm not altogether convinced um, as I said because we took out so, so little refrigerant now the car is 10 years old I doubt it's ever been touched um, in the air conditioning uh, department uh, but this will tell the tale uh, hopefully um, I'll install uh, some tracer dye uh, when we service the system so obviously I'll uh, I'll uh, bleed the system of the uh, the nitrogen that's in the system and then we'll see if we can get this plug off. It looks extremely tight and difficult to access. So, we'll so remove the uh, plastic, the uh, under tray on the right hand side, left hand side, sorry, and the uh, slam panel. Again, just so I could move the uh, condenser out of its mount at the bottom. Because if you don't, you're not going to be able to access the plastic cap here on the, uh, uh, for the desiccant back there. Uh, in the uh, collector tube at the end here where the desiccant bag sits uh, this is super tight I'll be honest with you I put my impact on the lowest setting and I worked it back and forth and I finally got it to, to actually start to come loose but I, I felt like I was going to break the uh, the aluminum uh, the welds on the condenser itself but it's coming well, I should have mentioned for the uh, desiccant for the dryer tube uh, cap uh, you're going to need a 14 millimeter hex I had to buy this I've got a kit of this, but it didn't go this to this size. 14 mil. So there's the original 
plug actually removed from the receiver dryer section, let's call it, the collector tube on the uh, condenser. And uh, there is the uh, replacement, they're identical. It's nice and clean, the screen. Um, this is a Denzel uh, kit that I bought for the uh, for the desiccant. And the advantage is, you know, you're going to have the right part. No, cheap though was like 33 bucks for this, if you can believe it. Don't open the uh, the desiccant uh, packaging until you're ready to install it. Keep it as dry as possible for as long as possible, and then immediately install the cap. So, a bit of a struggle getting this up. But, uh, you can see, I guess, even though OEM is cheaping out and giving you a smaller desiccant back. Anyway, I'll open this, slide it up, put the cap on. I'm bleeding a little bit of nitrogen through it just to keep the air out of it. Okay, so I'll bubble check the uh, the uh, desiccant cap there and uh, five minute leak check, guys, and it hasn't lost any pressure at all and there's no bubbles. So uh, obviously I still haven't replaced the uh, pressure transducer or pressure sensor here yet, but I like to do each component one at a time. That way if it leaks, you, you at least have some idea of the last thing that you touched, right? So uh, again, I'm gonna bleed the nitrogen and we'll change the, uh, finally, change the sensor. Just lube the O-ring with the uh, proper oil, system oil. And then uh, I'm embarrassed to say I don't have, a, I don't know what it is, a 26 or 27 mil? I've got 24, I've got 28, but uh, not 26 and 27 mil deep socket to get on this. So I'm embarrassed to use a couple of uh, adjustables. Uh, hold the block, otherwise you might bend the, kink the line in the, you don't want that after all this nonsense. It's just a wee bit of nitrogen in the system. That's it. Good one, ready to swap over. Again, there is no check valve in there, guys. Be fully aware of that. torque up so that's it torqued up uh taped up the uh the harness we bet protect the uh the wiring of course and uh that's it connectors clicked in whoops i forgot to add my refrigerant oil and um i'm gonna add some tracer dye to the system so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually just gonna pull the uh the uh, the schrader out of the high side here i'll replace it i've got some new ones in my kit here and uh yeah Almost forgot. So dispense with the manifold for the time being here, guys. All the uh, link checks were all good. Uh, 128 pounds of nitrogen and all the components that were replaced all seem fine. So uh, I've got a wee bit of a different setup here, only because I want to maximize the flow towards the uh, vacuum pump. So I'm just using my micron gauge. Uh, I think you can see we're done at 1500 microns already. Um, I'm really happy with that because uh, <laughs> when I've worked on my Suzuki there in the past, uh, these would be close to finishing numbers, not starting numbers. So um, as I said, I don't think this system has ever been tapped, uh, it's ever been broken into. Um, the desiccant bag and stuff as you saw earlier in the screens all looked pretty good so uh, I'm hopeful that we can pull this down in a relatively deep vacuum uh, below 500 would be ideal 500 is the target anything below that is gravy call that good so what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to use the combination of my can and my recovery tank, the surprisingly small amount of refrigerant that I actually recovered. Keep in mind the car is 10 years old now, right, you know. So uh, it's just about bang on the uh, the uh, 420 mark, uh, keeping in mind there's a plus or minus 50 gram tolerance and there'll be a little bit of line loss as well. So that'll just be a bit, uh, just be a bit bang on. So I'm going to commence with that. I'll get back to you because I can't really do this and film at the same time and there's too much going on. I don't want to make any mistakes. At this so what point. I'm going to do is I'm going to open the, uh, the valve. I'm going to purge all the lines. Uh, they're all uh, under vacuum. Uh, well, they're under vacuum up to this point here. Um, I'll purge all the lines and then I'll uh, 
open up my depressors again because you can see I've switched the manifold uh, again and um, I'm going to fill the high side with liquid um, once that is basically deplenished and we don't have vapor in the can then I'm going to uh, continue to fill through the uh, low side with the vapor that will be in the can and uh, what I have inside the tank and we now have an active um, valid uh, pressure sensor reading 720 kilopascals is about 104 psi ish all done here just kind of performance testing it now i've got the system set for low inside the car it's 16 degrees ambient temperature is just 22 ish 21 and a half very humid um the evaporator temperature and the evaporator target temperature you can see they're very very close so between the compressor uh, target and the actual speed and the evaporator and uh, target and actual temperature uh, it's good to you can see that the system is attaining its target values right so it seems to be working normally let me just show you here uh, the pressures uh, between my can of refrigerant and what I had recovered I think I just got about the uh, the uh, mass of the refrigerant just about right the uh, high side and the low side values look pretty reasonable um, side glass you can see the uh, fluorescent dye in there side glass is quite clear you can see the circulation we bought bubbles but more like not really bubbles just circulation more than anything else the uh as i said it's quite humid so uh there's tons of uh condensation on the windows I've had the uh, system running for a wee while I'll just take the inside discharge like a meat locker in here man uh discharge is about 50 degrees i could probably uh, lower that i'm gonna lower this so you can actually hear me um but everything is uh of course it's uh, being a, a variable speed um, compressor electric compressor everything is being adjusted to meet the demands the targets right so it's kind of a wee bit different than a traditional setup right that's it guys uh i was pretty happy with this it's nice and cool in here that's it cheers